Welcome back. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. A um, lot on still sorting out my dad and uh, being without cars were troublesome to say the least. Anyway, uh, in this week's update we've got a bit of scraping where we fit the tool post to the top of the tool slide and that's that's worked in all right. I then need to basically scrape in the dovetail faces. Um, so prior to actually getting on with doing that, I thought I'd make up some new scrapers, um, slightly smaller than the one, the big one I've been using, just for the simple reason, instead of me working up here, I can be working down there, which is just makes it a little bit easier when, when I'm doing into working into dovetails. Uh, so it shows uh, that we've got a bit of footage of the shaper, we've got some wood turning and uh, putting them all together. Uh, these are they. Uh, I'll show you some close-ups of these. Uh, I've actually made up, I think I've made up three. I only want one. Um, if there's any interest in them, I'm going to be selling these complete except for the tips. So you buy your own tip, uh, 50 quid uh, plus postage. Uh, which is uh, not bad considering I think it's about 14 quid's worth of steel in it and uh, there's quite a few hours Doesn't look it but quite a few hours, but uh, anyway, it's all there to support the channel and me going forward uh, I've made up a good quantity of spare handles So basically if you just want to buy the handle and you want to make your own sh shafts and that's fine Top is line. Uh, We'll work out a deal on that uh, the reason I'm not supplying them with tips is the price of the carbide tips from Sandvik, which are my current preferred uh, tip. In the UK, it's ridiculous. They're like 35, 40 quid for a 30 mil wide scraper tip. Uh, and I know the lesson that elsewhere in the world. Um, Brexit's been a marvellous development for the UK. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll show you how we scrape the seat for that and make sure it was all in alignment. Cheers for now. Uh, at the end of the video, there's a bit more footage of the area I grew up with. It seemed to go down well last time, so I've added a bit more. Cheers. Well, in between various dramas of uh, stealing two hours to get me head square and uh, do a bit more scraping. So we've got the cross slide bottom half of the compound slide and the top half of the compound slide and what I'm looking to do is get that plane which is where the tool post proper sits basically parallel with the surface plane uh, it's, it's reversed at the moment I'll, the operator side is that side so that's with the head pointing uh, virtually parallel with the uh, spindle so this would be the chuck position here turning tools poking out here and you work running that way the reason is it just means I can reach over and get all the measurements. Uh, so roughly, roughly, that's the lowest point, which you'd expect nearest the chuck. And it goes three, five, six thou, seven thou, seven thou, six. So basically this edge is tipped up. So I'm going to scrape that back, get its arm reading within a thou all over it, and then do a few runs, get some contact below the bottom of the tool post. The blue on it at the moment is from when we first just roughed it out so we could get a print and get some kind of level uh, and it's uh, a long way out so uh you've seen all this before i'm not sure how much i'll video uh, not least of which because having changed my phone uh, the other one was five year old and uh we're having trouble with compatibility between iphone and uh, windows 10. so we're now trying to record in 720p at 30 frames to see if i can actually just download images and get on with it that's had two roughing cycles. So we're zero down here. And we got four thou, four thou, three, three, four, four. So you see straight away in what I think that's took me about eight minutes. I've halved the variation. And that's what you want to be aiming to do in your roughing cycles, just shift the material, get it down. And you, you want to be roughing until you're within a thou. So we'll give that another couple of cycles. And obviously the further, the nearer we get to it, the more measurements we need to record. Because until we start printing, we're only doing, we're only roughing, and we're not going to get a perfectly even surface. You know, I'm scraping a thou off it per cycle, so if I miss a bit, you get eye point. Right. Yeah. 
Ooh. I hate using clamps because it's all the doing up and doing up. Take off the fours first, and then we go back and do the threes and cover the four areas. Yeah, we have to clamp this. Give that all the measurement and see where we're at. So basically, I've got to leave this area, and then all that lot's got to come down two thou, and then we're within a thou of these two corners. Could have done with a vice on the table, that would have helped.
And you get the idea. And it's just rinse and repeat. As we get within sort of a couple of thou, we start shortening the strokes and trying to get a more even finish. So you, your overlaps are more key. So I work on sort of 50% overlap. And it's a very, uh, well, almost flat edge. That's just what I use all the time. Oh, no. So that's five roughing cycles. Um, basically, we've got a few zeros starting to pop up, which basically means that those points are the same height as this. I've got a couple of high points on the end here and around here. So I'm just going to give them and knock them off, clean it off, stone it, and then we'll start printing it with the bottom of the tool post, which we know we've already flattened. Well, that's just a case of starting to get good, you know, we're looking for good contact. But as you can see, we're somewhere within, um, a thou is a thou up from here, a point is half a thou. So we're getting in there. I just don't want to dig any holes in where I've already took it down low enough. Alrighty. So that's uh, finished the roughing cycles. It's had three levelling, which is basically the same weight distribution of scrapes all the way across one's that way then that way and then basically back again so we're not a million miles off now we've got a level we've got the startings of a decent plane so i'll just bring in a few a few more bits and that bit's i think done i we'll need to have a look at the interface between um the flat faces on the on the mating face when it's clamped when the lower half is clamped and then we're doing the uh, inclined faces so that's that about i think it's about a dozen cycles now um the difference between the blue plane which is what we're working on and the lowest point is four tenths so i'm just going to keep knocking the blues back now increasing the coverage and bringing that in it's already started but there's a bit of pitting in it if you can see so yeah it's getting there now well i'm calling that done it's all within plus or minus two tenths so that's your your lowest point and there's a couple of higher points on it coverage is good so yeah i mean it is only the seat for the tool post so there's no point in getting too excitable Anyway, it's tea time. That's, uh, I think it's took four hours. It must be a quicker way, because uh, apart from that, if, you, if it weren't for that boss, it'd be a hell of a lot quicker. But uh, there we go. Good deed for the day. This little fella was worn out. Thinning down some standard uh, thick wall stainless tube for uh, finishing pass for the ferrules. It's a bit stringy.
boot. Well, that's given me a few handles to go up. Um, these are the ones I've made today. A little bit smaller than the... Uh, not much, but uh, a little bit smaller. So I'm not buggered about putting grooves in them because I've just found it collects uh, swarf, which transfers to your hand uh, when you scrape him. Uh, these are ash. And these are, those are mahogany. And they're uh, mostly ash in there. A uh, bit of a clean up job now. I have to sheet up, otherwise the dust lands on everything. Which is just a bloody nightmare. Anyway, jobs are good. So when I was a kid, this was this field was officially called the old cricket pitch because there used to be a pavilion. You can just see a post here. That's about all that's left of it. Uh, I've never seen them play cricket on here, but it would have been turn of the last century. Anyway, what we referred to it as was the conquer field because there's a lot of horse chestnut trees. Um, as kids would come down and collect them in September. And many a child broke an arm climbing the trees trying to get hold of them. It's got a bit of livestock in it now and it was always used by the old slaughterhouse in the village. And they bring the beast in here for the last few weeks just to fatten them up. Bit grim but that was the way it went. And it's been made into sort of a, a park area now. And they used to be, I don't know whether they're still there, whether that's one of them, and that's the other one there, English walnut trees. And they were huge, and you did used to find walnuts under them. They're quite rare in this part of the country. Anyway, another part of my youth revisited. Where we're heading for is the vicarage field, which is down through this gap. So this is the vicarages field. The vicarage is just up there. I spent hours and hours searching for chub in this little tiny stream. It's nice to know that it's still not been built on. We'll have a look at the old bridge at the bottom. We want to hazard a guess as to how old that is. The archway is a brick, so it's perhaps not as old as uh, Soper's Bridge, which is Saxon. Anyway, that leads up to that place. That's had a lot of work done to it. So we've walked from the vicarage through to this old railway bridge, which is still in use. Hell of a lot of work goes into one of these. I don't know why the bricks are sloping down. All engineered brick, brick, bricks from, I'm guessing, late Victorian, early Edwardian. And this one's got the local name of Thunderbridge on account of when the trains go over, it uh, rumbles. Spent a few hours fishing under here as well. 